Hey, what's up guys? Too Tall Toby here and welcome to another tutorial session where today we're going to try to solve this guy here, the hinge bracket. This was a practice model that I posted last week and uh, you can see here this is what the drawing looks like. If you haven't had a chance to do it yourself yet, maybe you want to pause this video and give it a try yourself, see if you can get through it. But uh, for me, I'm going to get into it here. I'm going to try to come up with a game plan. I'm going to try to create this model as quickly as I can. Ow! All right, so let's start the clock on this thing and see what we come up with. Uh, as always, anytime you're looking at a challenge like this, you wanna start getting into the habit of deciding on the best starting plane and the best starting profile for this challenge. So in the case of this model, I'm looking over the model. I see that we've got some symmetry here. So I'm probably gonna start on this plane that's going right down the middle. That would be the front plane of the model. And since there's so much dimensional information on this view, I'll probably end up creating this sketch here here as my starting sketch. So I'll begin a new sketch on the front plane. I'll create this sketch here. Maybe the origin will be located down in this corner. I mean, I think that's a fine location for the origin. So that's, I think, going to be my game plan. I'm going to start out this model on the, uh, the front plane, creating that basic overall sketch. Then from there, I'll maybe get in here and start carving out some of these other features using a cut extrude. So maybe I could create this feature here using a cut extrude, create this feature here coming down from the top using a cut extrude, maybe add in this tombstone shape as a cut extrude, and then finally I'll finish up with these holes. So I think compared to some of the other challenges, this one should be a little more straightforward, but who knows, we might run into some uh, unexpected features features along the way. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to move this over to my other monitor. I'm going to begin a new part here. This is going to be a part in MMGS, a part in millimeters. I'm going to go to the front plane, begin a sketch and orient my view, press the S key to bring up my S key menu and begin a line. And I'm going to come over with that line. It looks like that line is supposed to come over 55. So I'm just going to type in that dimension right away, come back and touch the end point and then come off of that to automate the creation of an arc with a radius of 25 millimeters. Single click that lets me jump back into the line command. This line is going to come up. I'm not exactly sure what the distance is. Come back and touch the end point. Come around with an automated arc again with a radius of 14. Single click, jump back into the line command. Uh, it looks like actually this is two tangent arcs right in a row. So I'm going to come back uh, from the line command, touch that end point, and type in the radius there of 89. You can see how learning how to input those uh, smart dimensions as you're creating arcs can really save you a lot of time. Then it looks like this thing basically just finishes off with a vertical line. So I'll just create a line there like that, hit escape, and then take that line and drop it down on that uh, end point. So now the missing dimensions would be this angle here, which looks to be an angle of 75. The height from this baseline up to the center of that arc there, which looks to be 70 millimeters. And the height from the base up to this point here, which looks to be 36 millimeters. And once we add in those final dimensions, we can see that everything is fully defined and we're ready to move on to our extrude command. So I'm just going to press the S key on my keyboard, jump into the extrude command. That's going to be at a depth of 40, enter, and then I'll right mouse button in the background and choose mid plane and then right mouse button again to finish that command. Now I'm ready to create that little uh, scalloped out area at the top corner this area right here. And so I'm going to need to reuse some of that geometry from earlier in the design. There's also kind of an interesting dimension for this feature. We can see the dimension is listed here as 16 centered about the uh, middle of the model. So instead of creating that sketch here on this face, maybe what I'll do is I'll click on the front plane, hold my cursor over the border of the plane, hold control and drag, and I'll bring that out to a depth of eight millimeters. Now I can begin sketching on that face and I'll start out by taking this edge, this edge, and this edge, and converting those entities, since I'm gonna need to use that geometry to help shape that scalloped region. Now it looks like I've got a horizontal line coming across here like so. And finally, I've got an arc. This arc is centered here on this hole, so I can begin it like so, and then come around with a centered arc like that. Uh, let's determine what that radius is. Looks like that radius is supposed to be 20 millimeters. So, okay, there we go. Now things are looking a little bit more uh, like what we've got in the, um, in the uh, 2D print. Although I am a little perplexed. This, this, appear, this line here appears to uh, be far too short for what we were uh, looking at in that 2D print. So like I said, we might run into a little bit of challenges, unexpected challenges in this one, and we're gonna have to go back and maybe re-examine some of our earlier geometry to determine what's going on. 
So let's take that geometry, let's do an extrude cut. We'll go reverse direction, we'll go through wall, and let's see if what we see in our model matches the 2D print. Well, I think it's pretty clear that this region here is supposed to be much wider than what we've got in the 2D print, this line over here. If we can't figure out what's going on there. So let's see, I zoom in here. This has a uh, coincident relationship. What's that coincident relationship going on? Ah, interesting. So it's coincident. So I clicked on this one and this one over here highlighted as well. Uh, I clicked on this relationship here, coincident. I was kind of wondering to myself, like that line should be horizontal, but it probably shouldn't have a coincident relationship. Well, when I clicked on it, this relationship over here highlighted as well. So it looks like I inadvertently, when I was sketching that line, made it coincident to this point over here. So I just need to delete that relationship. I just press delete on my keyboard after highlighting it. And now we can see that this line is blue. We're able to move it into place. And if we look at the print, there is a driving dimension for that print of 60 millimeters. That's what we were missing. All right, no big deal. We were able to resolve that. We can keep moving forward with this challenge. Let's make that 60 and S key. Oh, actually we already made that feature, right? I don't even need to extrude cut it. So now a little trick that I like to use is I will pre-select the front plane, then I'll hold control and select that cut extrude, and then I'll go up to the mirror command and I can mirror that feature right across. So now I've got that mirror on both sides. I'm gonna select this face here, begin to sketch, orient the view, wake up the center point of that just by holding my cursor over the edge and dropping in a circle there with a radius of 15, S key, extrude cut, right mouse button through all. Okay, so now we're pretty much done with that region up there. Uh, we can go to our top plane, begin a sketch, orient our view. I'm using control in the number eight there to orient our view. And it looks like the opening of that is 18 millimeters. So this looks to be 18 by 40. So anytime we're working with a rectangle, we can just use our auto dimensions to go and input those dimensions very quickly. Pick that center point, hold, or sorry, pick the origin, hold control, pick this line and make that midpoint. Uh-oh, we got an error here. Why are we getting an error? Well, that time I actually happened to notice it. I accidentally added a coincident relationship to this plane. No problem. Click on that coincident relationship, press delete, and there we go. Another way to avoid that would have been if I would have hidden that plane ahead of time, uh, SolidWorks wouldn't have added that relationship. So a couple of different ways we could have maybe worked through that, but I think it's good to see some of these mistakes so that you guys can learn how to avoid those mis mistakes when you're going through and creating your models. So now I'll just take this face here, select a plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, and I will jump into the slotted hole command. Uh, we could also use the you know line arc line command to accomplish this, but a lot of times slotted hole is an easy way to just you know make a coincident relationship like so, and then start adding our dimensions. So from the center of that slotted hole to the base there is a distance of 16. Looks like this slotted hole has a radius here of seven. And finally the length from this edge and then we hold the shift key. So we're going from this edge here and then we're gonna hold the shift key and that'll let us pick the tangency of the arc. That distance to tangency is 30. So remember, if you hold the shift key, that will help you automatically get the uh, distance to tangent. Now we can make that through all, hit the green check mark, and then one final sketch here, uh, select our circle command, and it looks like this is one of these dimensions that you sometimes see in drawings, where the dimension of the radius 25 is telling us that the hole is also centered on that same radius because that that uh, radius extension arm is starting right at the center of that hole. So sometimes you'll see dimensions like that where uh, the, the radius is ending up exactly centered in that hole. And so that's telling us that this radius 25 and this 18 through hole are concentric to one another. So I can go here to this face, select face, begin a sketch, orient the view. And I can do the S key, wake up the center point, drop my circle here and give that a diam diameter of 18. And then that's gonna be S key, extrude cut, right mouse button through all, right mouse button again. We can hide this little sketch plane here just for fun. We can rotate the model around, do what we call the final spin. I think everything looks pretty good on there. It looks like I got uh, all the features that I need for that thing. So let's assign the appropriate material, ABS, and let's go to our mass properties and come up with a mass property here of 118 grams. Did we get it right? I don't know. Let's go over to the print. We can pause this 10 minutes and two seconds. Not a bad time. And then I can come to the very end of the uh, of that video 
And the correct answer is 118 grams. Yes, we did it. We did it. So now we would go down into the comments. We would say, hey, I did it in 10 minutes and two seconds. Not too bad. And uh, that's basically it for that practice model. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed seeing me go through that, sharing some tips and tricks. If you did, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Maybe consider picking up one of these Too Tall Toby t-shirts because they are beautiful and they are made out of the softest material in the CAD game. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial.